true story based on true events and true situations. Story Time by Michael DeSilvis. It's about a story about a family and kids that really loved and adored this person. Ah, man, they went over there for Bible studies together. They ate meals together. They came over the person's house together and baby were babysat by them. And they would tell him tell them stories and and they liked it and they'd go over to watch T V and had a wonderful time. Went to the mountains with they would go to the mountains together. And it was really, really nice up there in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Pure beautiful Appalachian trails that they had up there. Uh, we'll look out at, over at look out or look back rock or look out and uh you could look down at one spot where you would see the car and it looked really small. That's pretty cool, the person said. And it was just a wonderful time. But then one day all this stuff abruptly came to a screeching halt because they had a disagreement over doctrine. And doctrine, what it was, is that God predestinates will over some things, but gives free will over most things, as far as humans go, uh, as far as man goes. Because if there was no choice, there wouldn't be free will, right? That's what the person exclaimed. And then the mother of the of the children said, when they were at youth group, said, well, I hope this don't put a strain on our relationship because I didn't really agree with some of the things you said in your prayer because we don't believe that way. And the person exclaimed and said, well, I don't tend to put a strain on the relationship at all because it really isn't an issue to me. Your differences aren't a big deal to me because I understand them. And the person just felt like exclaiming what he felt during prayer time about some things, not because of their differences to cause, you know, a quarrel or anything. The person was not trying to do that at all, but it seemed like the mother was trying to find something to tit for tat because she was sort of like that sometimes. She likes to pick at things. Um, and secondly, another thing that was really strange is that after all this stuff has happened, the next day, um, which was Monday, what the email said when it was on Thursday, said that that her daughter freely told her that about story about what happened to her, and what really happened, what what really happened to her. And I said, well, why? The person goes, well, why would they use the word freely in the email so openly? Why would they have to use that word if a person told the information without any coercing or forcing? And the person said, well, if this happened. If this happened, which something did happen between them, but why did she wait so long to tell this to her parents? Well, the reason is because of love. She loved this person and still does. But we'll tell you a little more about that in a bit. But the thing is, sadly to say, this person now is viewed as a sexual predator cannot be around the kids at all. As a matter of fact, she talks to the neighbor in his apartment complex by the name of Barbara Poe, who lives directly across from him, and has really has been trying to ruin his name since 2009 because she just simply clearly doesn't like this person and just doesn't really want to have nothing to do with him. So she made up the story that he lured her granddaughter one day into his apartment but the funny, strange thing about it is, is that he was asleep when her granddaughter entered into his apartment. So, that's the truth about it. But see, she goes around telling the story that he lured her in. And that's probably what she told the mother. The same story. And of course it was a lie. Because that's not even truly what happened. The door was unlocked, yes, randomly. Sometimes it is unlocked. That day the person left it unlocked and the daughter walked in you know, innocently, and he was asleep and was woken up by the daughter, saying, you got to get up, you got work to do, you know, 
and it was really strange to see her in here in this person's apartment but you know but after that that's when the story surfaced there was spread around that she was lured in even though the guy was sleeping but i don't know how you lure somebody in when you're sleeping because that just doesn't work that wouldn't really happen but so anyway uh that's probably what she told the mother and so the mother's been talking to her ever since. There's been four meetings that we know of that she's come over here to Harbor Square Apartments to talk um, to this person. And there may have been many more, but those are the ones that we know of to date. Um, one was on the end of October where they had a 12-minute exchange conversation while uh, the groceries were being put away. And uh, then after that, they had many other meetings that followed up ever since then for the last four and a half months to date. And uh, we know they've been doing calls and texting and email and even talking in person, having face-to-face -face encounters over at the apartments, like we said to this person. Uh, this person has made a living hell for this individual. A landlord, uh, you know, has it been exaggerating and embellishing stuff? She said, when the person asked him, why is all this stuff happening? He's not the cause for the conflict. It's the lady across the hall who's causing the conflict. Because I don't know what she's told you, but it's a bunch of lies. I said, well, the person goes on to say that he did speak with the comp her company one time because she was saying something that wasn't true and he had to clarify and correct that because she was saying a lie about this individual speaking to this person. Anyway, and of course it was a lie. And then she went and told the story that every time her, somebody would come over that this person would go and question why are they there, or why the departments went ahead and said that he was the sheriff of the building, which was another lie. Uh, that's her that's the sheriff of the building. Another thing that she would do is that she would come outside the hallway every time someone would come in and out of the apartment where the person lives, like she's watching, like she's a private eye cop, and she's got to do that. And whenever he, whenever this person would leave, she would call somebody and say, oh, that person's leaving, or, oh, he just got home. And uh, she would give reports and call the mother of the children who's, um, that he's had to fall on out with, um, and give reports to her, too, about things and be calling her and giving her reports, you know, about her daughter as to that she's not here and things like that. And this has been going on for some time. And, uh, you know, the thing is, it's just really weird behavior over the top. And see, the landlord's like, well, all you got to do is just go in the apartment, shut your door and be quiet. And uh, don't worry about what's going on outside. And I'm like, and the person's like exclaiming, well, how can I do that when it's been going on for almost seven years and nothing's really been done about it? That's why things have gotten to where they are right now. You know, and she goes on to say, well, you called the police on her. And the guy goes, yeah, the police were called because of what she's doing. You know, follow me around in the car is what he said. You know, where he's going to see where he's going, what places he goes to, both him and uh, another neighbor named Danny following them in the cars. They're both driving their vehicles separately and they're seen following them where he's going and following them on the way home. Um, and that's why they were called. Other time they were called because just two weeks ago she was outside the apartment making children noises like provoking or rubbing it in. Ha ha ha. You can't have children over there. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. I got you, uh, 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 making children noises and taunting the guy, when yet that's not even really true, but that's what she's doing. But that's what she did. That was two weeks ago. So he opened the door and said, are you having fun out here? Because that's what she was doing. And she come up the back step, she had, like she come up the back step so she could look into his apartment as he opened the door to see if anybody was in there. Because she's so paranoid and worried about everything. She's been sort of like this, but now she's been overdrawn over overact overly paranoid because of what the mother has told her and what she shared with the mother and you know like i've always said to this lady that you can have an opinion but you have to be careful what you state to people because sometimes they can be your friend but they're not really friendly they're just pumping you for information so basically what you're doing is giving them more ammunition so they can try to cost this person the place where they live 
Because what they're going to do is they could tell you, oh, they won't tell the office anything, but they go and tell the office stuff. Because they lie. Because all they're doing is pumping information from you. So they try to get you all friendly, but really they're not being friendly at all. They're just two-faced and they're lying to you. So they can destroy this person because that's the way they want to get this person out of here. And when you talk to this person, you said you weren't A, going to go and spread this stuff around. You weren't going to ruin their name. And you said you were not going to cost them the place where they live. Well, you talking to the neighbor across the hallway is not really a smart idea. It's like he advised you many times not to talk to this lady because she's a drama queen and she's a troublemaker. And she always likes to get in things that don't concern her. And all these things were true, what he said, totally. But you did not listen to him when he advised you not to do this. So you went ahead and talked to her anyway. Then you went and talked to Georgiana Sanford, another lady that he doesn't know but knows of. But she's the same way too. A drama queen, a troublemaker, and a gossiper. And these both two ladies have done just that. So instead of building bridges and repairing things, basically what's happened is bridges have been burned and destroyed and nothing is being built. Matter of fact, this lady has cut him out of his life completely. She's like closed the chapter on it and is trying to brainwash her children to do the same exact thing. And it's just so wrong why she would do this when this person has known her for seven years, has babysit the kids, has helped her with many hours of counseling with her children pertaining to her children, helped her with things in the home, did a lot of computer work for free, some was charged. But then she went around taking business away from him, a $30,000 job, job that he would have got from a place. But she took that away because she needed some help because she's got a family, you know, and they don't have a lot of money. So she figured it was justifiable because she rides him around. That's what she said. So she figured that was okay to do that, which it wasn't okay because people who are friends and family don't still work from each other. And be just like me, I know that her husband does a lot of printing work and I wouldn't go and still work from him, you know, because I thought I wouldn't do that. Even if I didn't like him, I wouldn't do that because I, I'm not that way. But, you know, I love him and I love, I love this person too. And I love the children too. You know, at least this person says that. That's what he said to me. He said, he goes on and says, he does. He loves him very much and he misses him very much. And he went on to state that he that they would be safe no matter where they were with him by themselves or if he was there over their place, you know, they would still be safe. So there's no reason to be doing all these measures. He went on to say he's truly sorry. He truly did repent from what he did. And it is hoped that she'll forgive him and really show that forgiveness and love and not just say the words but not show it because by her spreading stuff around does not show it. We know as, as to date that they've met, that she's met over here with Barbara Poe four times. They probably have met more times than that off the property and such. And we know that they have talked on the phone many times and have sent text messages back and forth over the last duration of five months. She talks about a private eye. Well, this is what a private eye does. So I'm just giving you some of the intel that this person has on this lady, Barbara Poe. Barbara Poe has also a criminal record, has also been put in a mental hospital for violence and also temper and anger issues. She's also, um, she's also, you know, got divorced from her husband, um, does not really have much of a social life, does not really have many friends. This stays mainly to herself, mostly, does not, she's not, she's really a hermit, just kind of sticks to herself. Nobody hardly really comes in and out of her apartment too much. She doesn't really talk to too many people except for Danny, Patricia, and uh, Faye sometimes. Um, but as far as everybody else, you know, nobody really talks to her around here in the apartment complex because she kind of sticks mainly to herself, so that's a red flag right there. Um, and, you know, th to say the least, I don't know why a lady would associate with a lady that's like this because she lies, she embellishes things, she's delusional, she makes things up that aren't there, she don't know the answer, she'll just make it up. She's very manipulative and, uh, you know, and controlling, just like, this lady is controlling and manipulative, just like she's coursed things, you know, out of her children. You know, like she probably coursed things out of her daughter, which I know they did because all the kids told me that they did. And I've witnessed this when she was doing this to her son, Jeremy. So I, I know as a person is telling the story here, that's going on. And that's probably what happened with the daughter. So the daughter just, 
told what she told because that's what she was coursing out to tell her what she wanted to hear. So that's why it came out the way it did. And also, it's because of love, because that's why she didn't come sooner. That's what the guy exclaimed. But the thing is, he, he is truly sorry, and he wants the family to really know that. And he's communicated that many times through phone calls, oh, on the phone, and even talked to him in person about it. And they still have not, they say they forgive him and they love him, but they really aren't really showing it by truly allowing him to come back to see the family and to be with the family. Instead, they treat him like an outcast, a sexual predator, and don't want him to be around there. Then she goes with training to trust even more by still having these secret meetups with Barbara Poe, who lives, you know, in the complex of Harbor Square, across the hallway from him, and just, just making a life as a living hell. I mean, this person could cost him his place. That's why, you know, he's advised her not to talk to her because she's this kind of person that will do this. She'll say anything just to get the information and she'll go and tell the office. And that's what she's been doing. So, you know, because I know she's been doing it because the way the landlord has been treating him over here has been, uh, actually has been showing pre evidence of that. When really, there's no reason for the landlord to act this way because there's nothing that this person has done. He has no record, you know, as far as that goes on his stuff, even though he's been alleged and accused of it. You know, and this girl's been accusing him for years of it, but there's no record on it. But yet she goes and runs her mouth all the time. She's always looking in every time somebody's going in and out. As a matter of fact, she's outside the apartment. She just went in right now just to hear what's going on. Um, you know, it just really has caused a lot of problems with this person. And so something needs to be done. And, you know, why would you associate with somebody like this? You know, why would you listen to the rantings and the lies that she would put out? You know, you're, you're a woman of God. You hand tracks out for the love of God. And talk about you love Jesus and hope that people come to Jesus. But why would you treat somebody like this? If you're a person like this, that sounds like you're a hypocrite. That's what it looks like. Because people that are true Christians don't act like this. They give their problems to God. And they give their problems to the Lord and let the Lord handle it. Vengeance is mine, is the Lord. And if something is happening with the daughter in that person... Allow them to be together when the right time comes, when they're eight, when they're 16 years old. Like you said, don't be telling a story and saying, oh, looking, you know, if, if, if she still feels that way, then you all can get back together. I mean, you can be together if she still feels that way when she's 16 years old. But a lot can happen between then. But then now you're flipping the script totally and saying you never said that and you're going to do everything in your power to avoid that from happening. How is that being godly? How is that being Christian? That wasn't made up. That's exactly what the person said to this person. So why would you say that to this person? It's so wrong. You know, why would you do that? They, I think all the stuff has happened. You should give them the right to be with your daughter when that time comes. Allow them to be together because they really love each other. They really do. And even though they're 33 years apart, they could still be together and it could still work because they really do love each other. And that's all that should really matter. It shouldn't be about all this predator stuff because he's not a predator. Yes, he went a little too far one night. And he did, because love does that. But that does not make that person classified to being a sexual predator, the way he's being treated, not allowed to be around the kids, not allowed to be able to see them, not cutting them off out of your life, you know, spreading rumors and still having secret meetings with Barbara Poe, and who knows God, who else? You know, this has got to stop. If we're Christians, and that, you know, you, know, you don't do that. You handle things, you give it to God. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what the Bible says to do. Not to go spread and talk about it all over the town, okay, like you've been doing. You know, it's like you talking to that retired teacher social worker. You say she's too sick, she won't ever call or go to the police. How do you know? She could have a good day. Priscilla could just get on the phone and call him because she used to do that for a living. People who go through training, I've been through the training, and anybody knows if you've been in social work, they can go to the police with the stuff you're telling them. And it's just like who you're telling stuff about. you got to be careful what you say. That's what the friend said that you do. You tell things too much. And then you tell things to people because you think they're your friend and you get too personal with them. And then you wonder why, you know, and it can get to construed and it can cost you to get in a lot of trouble. You could lose your children because of some things you're saying. Because somebody can make it up or lie or construe things around because the world we live in. How do you know Barbara Poe won't do that? Because I, I don't put it past her. She could because she's a liar. She's delusional. I mean, she could say anything. I wouldn't even trust her as far as I could throw her. And then you have the likes and the IQ to go talk to her is beyond, you know, 
any reason or logic why you would do that to this person because this person has advised you over and over again to stay away as a warning, not as a secret agenda, but as a solemn warning so that this stuff would not be real hard for this person living where they're living here in the place where they live. And because you've done that, that's why she's been like this. She's calling you. She's emailing you. She's having secret meetings with you out here in the parking lot, plain sight. You know, she's having meetings with you in different places off the grounds, like at Walmart things, you know, talking to you and stuff. I know she's doing this. That's what the man goes on to say. You talk about being a private eye. Well, that's a private eye. Okay. You know, she's been tailed. She's been seen many places talking to you. Okay. So that's what a private eye does. Okay. Her phones have been bugged. You know, her car is bugged. Okay. Everywhere she goes is being bugged. Okay. So that's just to let you know that's, that's what's going on. You know, because that that's really what is going on, okay? I don't know what she's told the management here at the, at the what she's told them here at where the place where he lives at Harbor Square. I don't know what she's told them there, but it's really strange because, you know, she's, you know, the manager saying all kinds of wild notions, you know, saying that music is loud out in the park a lot. When the person's going out in the park a lot with the music at the normal volume that they have it every time they have it on, and you don't even hear it out there. So she's going by the words of somebody else. Then she's saying that everybody in the building has said something to her, which is a lie, because nobody's talked to her about anything. So I don't know where she got that information from, unless it's from some little man in her pocket, you know, that's in her mind, you know, where she made it up. But, you know, that's what she said to the person on the phone on Friday. Um, you know, that, and then she said that every time this person has company, that you that the person questions this individual or questions their guest, and that's not true. This person only questioned one guest, but she's twisted it around so that every guest that comes, that this person says something. It's like he's the cop of the building. And that was so hilarious when I heard that, because that's not even true. You know, when I heard that about her saying this about this individual, it was nuts. It floored me, because it's insane. Uh, but, you know, that's what's going on, you know, in... His life, it's like been a living hell. So I don't know what you've told this person, but if it were me, I would break off all conversation with her. I wouldn't have no more secret meetings with her. If she calls you and not answer the phone, I wouldn't have nothing to do with her because she's trouble. And I warned you about it way before now. And of course, that's what the friend said. I warned her about it, and you're not listening. So, you know, if you want to keep going and you want to keep siding with them because you think they've got a better story... And yet this per and you want to sacrifice the relationship you had with this person for seven years over what you've known of six or seven months of this other person, you know, talking to them and all, like your buddies and smoking buddies, you know. To me, it sounds like, you know, you really got a problem mentally up in your head because it seems like you value date what other people think more so when yet they don't even know half of what they're talking about because they don't even know the person like you know this person. This neighbor across the hall doesn't know Jack about this person. And you're willing to listen to the the craziness of what's coming out of her mouth. You know, it sounds really nuts to me. So anyway, I leave you with this question. Are you a bridge destroyer or are you a bridge builder? The point of the story is we need to build relationships. We need to work this out. We need to be loving. We need to treat people like family. If we're real family, we need to work together. And people need to come together and work it out. Bring them back in your life when the time is right. And if there is a relationship that's in the future with your daughter and God's doing something, don't get in the way or try to separate that. If that's what God wants, allow them to be together. And there's a lot of things that the daughter has showed as the person has communicated with me that she does love him. She called him up on Tuesday to warn him about the email on Thursday about what was going to happen. The daughter did that. So that's love. Why she waited, you know, three years to tell you? Not because she was in fear but because she loves the person and she didn't want to see this happen to the person because she knew how the parents would react, you know. So that's love. And the warning about it, that's love, you know. So it is a lot of things. And they said happy birthday to the person, you know, out on the outside the bus, you know, last week. That's love. So there's a lot of love there, including uh, the daughter. She said happy birthday. So, you know, the kids don't hate this person. You just don't want to have them, you know, see this person anymore because you don't really love this person. You say 
The daughter doesn't want to see this person. But no, I think that's really you that doesn't want to see it. It's not the daughter. So, you know, I think you need to get your facts straight. Stop lying to everybody and tell the truth. And stop lying, you know, be a real Christian and stand up, have balls and stop doing all this lying and betraying and spreading stuff around that you said you wouldn't do. And, you know, grow up and be an adult. And, you know, if the person's sorry, treat them Treat that person with love and kindness and compassion like the Bible does instruct. Don't do the ways of the world and get even. You know, like Barbara's telling probably you to do. But you should do what the Bible says, not what the world like Barbara Poe says. Okay? All right. So I will see you later. It's Michael DeSillis from New Hunter Church of Christ. And I hope this is story time will help many people who are going through a lot of misunderstandings because a lot of things can be blown out of proportion just like this, this happened here. And, uh, you know... Just, uh, you know, just a little pointer there. And uh, I just want to tell you these stories because it's all true and it can really happen to anyone if people take things out of proportion and blow it out of proportion. Take care. Shalom. Bye for now.